Hi everyone and welcome to another Autodesk screencast video. My name is Zan Ta with Deepa Products and our screencast video today will focus in on the Revit extensions reinforcement features to create rebar. In this particular video it will be using the tool on a beam. There is a screencast video that I just created for columns and so the same procedure applies. Here I am in Revit 2017 there is an extensions tab and in the extensions tab there is the Autodesk Revit extensions. The Revit extensions have to be downloaded and installed separately from Revit. You can do that through the Autodesk desktop app. In order for you to work with any of the reinforcement commands, they are contextual. In other words, you actually have to select the objects first. So I'll select the beam, go back to extensions, go back to reinforcement, and pick beams. Revit will open up the reinforcement of beams dialog box and in here just like in the columns you have a whole bunch of categories to work with and as you select each one the right side will change and give you the features that lie within. So for example under geometry it'll automatically pull the BIM data of that beam and display that data. Um, you can click stirrups and get into again the sizing of the bar. You can get into the hook type for hook 1 and hook 2 and then specifying the sizes as well. The stirrup type you can pick as well. Uh, Anti-shrinkage reinforcement can be turned on if you need to turn it on and specifying the bar number and the bar hook as well. Under stirrup distribution you can go ahead and specify for span 1, um, distribution of main stirrups, and the distribution type. You can also specify the values for S1. If you click bars-main, you'll get to the lower bar and the upper bar features. And again, you can specify those values. and what the values are for N, L, and so on and so forth. You can click additional top bars and specify that data if you need to specify that data. Additional bottom bars, same thing. If you place a check mark in the boxes, it'll activate those features and you can specify whatever property values that you need in those features. Bar division can be turned on by putting a check mark and then again you can get into the different uh, BIM features and input the data that you need. For example, lap splice can be done via coefficient or via length. And then reinforcement areas can also be set up as well if you need to. Once you go through the process of putting all the property information that you need for each of the categories, you can click OK and the extension feature will automatically kick in and start building the rebar for you and place those rebars accordingly. This is a pretty nice feature to have the extensions because if you are manually trying to create this content it gets a little cumbersome. So you'll also notice that I had it set to shaded so I can't really see anything because everything's internal. So I'm switching to wireframe. If you need to you can select any one of the rebars and do SA for select all and head over to view visibility states and say view as solid and then if you switch to a fine level of detail you can see that they have thicknesses and we'll do the same thing for all the other rebar and then lastly when you're looking at the rebar, uh, there are rounding overrides. If you need to override the rounding, it could either be nearest up or down. So nearest one inch increment, or round up by a specific value, or round down by a specific value. And again, if I shade this up, I should be able to see the rebar now since I've changed the visibility states of the rebar. Uh, and then again, in regards to the reinforcement extension tools, all of these other tools, they're pretty much exactly the same thing. The only difference is the type of object that you're working with. 
So just make sure you draw it first, then select it, and then go ahead and put in the bar. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching.